Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Beautiful Savior. It's good to see you here. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me one of the times I've been here before, my name is Robin Zaratsky. I'm a, a member at our sister congregation in Raleigh, Gethsemane Lutheran. Happy to be here, happy to fill in. It's, it's truly a joy, it's truly a privilege. Um, our worship service this morning, as usual, is in your worship folder and will be projected on the screen. Uh, our message this morning is going to focus on peace. Peace, particularly with God. It's one of the great messages of Christmas is as we finish this, it's last Sunday after Christmas, we're going to focus on that peace that God brings us through Jesus. Our service will then begin with our opening hymn, Now Sing We, Now Rejoice. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and fail to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil. Hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ have mercy. For the 
well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Our first lesson for today is taken from the book of Isaiah, where we read starting in chapter 61. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will celebrate because of my God, for he has clothed me in garments of salvation. With a robe of righteousness he covered me, like a bridegroom who wears a beautiful headdress like a priest, and like a bride who adorns herself with jewelry. For as the earth produces its growth, and as a garden causes what has been sown to sprout up, so God the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up in the presence of all the nations. For the sake of Zion, I will not be silent. For the sake of Jerusalem, I will not be quiet. Until her righteousness goes forth shining brightly and her salvation burns like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness and all kings will see your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will assign to you. Then you will be a beautiful crown in the Lord's hand, and a royal diadem in the palm of your God. This is the word of our Lord. Amen. We'll continue with our psalm today, Psalm 114. You can also find that on page 121 in the front of your hymnal. We'll speak the psalm responsibly. I'll read each part up to the asterisk. Congregation can join in the second part, and we'll uh, speak together the glory to the Father at the end. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him, Christ above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all You shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth. Lightning and hail, stormy winds that do His bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all rulers on earth. Young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Out of excitement for the words and works of Jesus, please rise for the gospel. gospel for today is recorded in the book of St. John, where we read in chapter 1. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, 
the glory he has as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him. He cried out, This was the one I spoke about when I said, The one coming after me outranks me, because he existed before me. For out of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only begotten Son, who is close to the Father's side, has made him known. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. And we'll continue with our next hymn, number 90, The People That in Darkness Sat. to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, if I were to ask you this morning to sum up your life in a single word or, or maybe a phrase, I'm going to hazard a guess that peaceful was not on the list of options. <clears throat> Hectic, perhaps, controlled chaos, maybe. Maybe yours is a little darker, maybe painful, oppressive, grim, but peaceful? Not usually. And yet, why not? I mean, how often do we say the word peace right here in our, in our liturgies, in our readings, in our songs? Isn't, isn't peace one of the most prolific gifts that God promises us? So why is it that we seem to so utterly lack this, this promised blessing? Well, if you're not feeling the peace right now, maybe a little reflection on Christmas is exactly what you need. But proper reflection on Christmas, because maybe, maybe when you think about Christmas, that is a little conflicting when it comes to peace, because... You know, we, we sing about peace, we, we talk about the angels' proclamation of peace at the first Christmas, but 
But maybe your mind drifts back to the rest of December. And again, peace is usually not the word most people use during that time. There's so many extra things to do, so many extra places to be, stuff to have ready. And there's emotions running high, and there's, there's family to visit, and that can be a source of conflict. And it's hard to really feel the peace of Christmas in the thick of all that. So we meditate on the proper Christmas. God came here to be with us. Just like we now look ahead to that day when God will return to take us to be with him, right? Emmanuel literally means God with us. That's where we find our peace, right? Is it? Should I be happy that God's coming to me? I mean, if I think about me, if I think about my life, you think about you, think about your life, any one of us could spend all day listing examples of ways we don't put God first, don't trust Him first, basically don't make Him our God. Every day is, is littered with choices that I've made and deliberate choices I've made to not have God as my true God. I break His commands, I sin, and... God is literally at war with sin. St. Paul tells us in, in another reading that the sinful mind is hostile to God. Our default state in this world is to be enemies of God. And not that we have a whole lot of choice in the matter, the way we come into this world, but what a dumb thing to do. Let's, let's, let's pick a fight with the ruler of the universe that's going to end really well. And so if God is coming here, and that's the, the default, that's maybe not something to look forward to so much. That's more on the end of terrifying. So maybe no wonder I can't find any peace. Okay. But let's, let's focus again on the angel's proclamation at Christmas. Peace on earth. Not judgment, peace. I mean, the, the devil works overtime during those holidays to distract us, but forget the trees, forget the lights, the presents, the cookies, the parties. Remember the manger. Jesus was born for one purpose, to restore peace between God and his creation. See, our sin, the things we've done wrong, they are a debt that we owe God. And our lives are not the perfect lives that God demands of us. But Jesus is both of those things for us. Jesus is our payment. Jesus is our perfect life. And all of this before anything we have done. Which is good because we would mess it up again. In our reading for today, Paul writes, For at the appointed time, while we were still helpless, Christ died for the ungodly. It is rare indeed that someone will die for a righteous person. Perhaps someone might actually go so far as to die for a person who has been good to him, but God shows his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That means that while we were enemies, while we fought God, while we had nothing to offer and in fact wanted nothing to do with him, God lived and God died for us. Jesus, God, came here and he died for you so that your sins could be paid for, so that his perfect life could be counted as yours. And then he sent the Holy Spirit to you to change your heart, to teach you the truth, to make you someone who loves God as much as he loves you. Entirely because of God's work. We are not enemies of God. God looks at you now. And he sees someone who always did whatever he asked. Always loved him. Always did everything right. There's no reason to fight between you and God anymore. God loves you. 
And because he loves you so much, he literally took your place so that he would not have to punish you. He lived, he died, and he rose for you. As Paul says here at the beginning of our reading, he that is Jesus, Jesus was handed over to death because of our trespasses and was raised to life because of our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. The God who rules over this world is not your enemy anymore. He is your loving Father. Just, just try to think of that reversal. Imagine all that power, all that wisdom, all that goodwill is applied for your benefit. Not only does the all-powerful God of creation no longer consider you an enemy, but he is actively interested in your well-being. And when this life ends, he will come and take you to paradise. What greater peace can we possibly have in this life than knowing that whatever happens now, it will pass. You have God behind all of it, helping you out, leading you to that glorious end. When God comes in the end to judge this world, we don't have to look at that with fear. We don't have to hear that last trumpet and cower. We can look up and we can say, Finally, we get to set down our hard labor and rest with God forever. Yes, the last day is a day of judgment, but we know what the judgment's going to be for us. Because of Jesus, God will say, not guilty. And our Father will say, come home. Be with me. I'll care for you forever. No suffering, no pain, no trouble ever again. And we get to be in perfect peace, perfect harmony with God forever. I mean, that's, that's really good news. The peace between you and God brings a, a sort of profound internal peace to our lives, come what may. It's not a peace that someone without God can know. It's really great. But there is still a problem. See, I, I doubt in the last ten minutes or so that I've said anything you didn't know. These are all things you've heard before. And yet, I posed the question at the start, how would you describe your lives? And yet knowing all this, again, I'm going to guess peaceful was not your answer. I mean, maybe now, Right now, being reminded of it all, hearing it all again, you're feeling the peace. That's great. Maybe, maybe you are feeling relaxed and, and ready to go back out and face life, knowing that God's on your side here and now and for eternity. But as you step out those doors today, how long do you suppose that's going to last? How long until you hit that first roadblock, the first problem, the first tough choice, the first thing not going your way, the first to-do list that just looks impossible. <clears throat> Until you hit something that steals this peace away from you. Maybe, maybe even sitting here and now, all the troubles in your life are backed up in your head and you just can't even feel the peace here because you know those are waiting for you. Why? Why does that happen to us? God called a truce. We didn't do anything to make it happen. He did all the work. He lived and he died and he rose before we even wanted anything from him. So why can we still not find peace? Well, follow me for a second on just a little bit of logical deduction. All right? There's two sides to this. There's God and there's us. And God is God. He's perfect. He's perfectly wise. He's perfectly loving. He's all-powerful. He does everything he does without mistake. So, if that's who worked the peace between us and him, and we're still not feeling the peace, 
not a huge leap of logic to guess where the problem is. It's, it's not with God. The problem is, even through everything God has done, everything He's done for you, He's declared peace between you both, you're still fighting Him. Either we fight Him through choices we make in our lives, or we fight Him because we don't accept His will in our lives. And both of those take peace from us that we should have in Him. Not that this life is ever going to be smooth sailing, nor should it be. But as we face the troubles, we can be at peace because of the peace we have with our God. So let's think about how we fight God so we can watch out for that. As I said, sometimes we fight Him through our, our active choices. We fight Him when we refuse to do the things He commands. God is a good Father. God does not impose His will arbitrarily. He's a good parent who only commands His children whatever is best for them. We know our parents do that. We don't always understand it at the time, but how many of you remember a time when you didn't listen to your parents because they told you to do something that, that you didn't want to do or you didn't understand why you should? I do. And a whole bag of Oreos later, I understood. That was a bad idea. Don't touch the stove. Don't run in the street. Don't play with the outlet. We don't tell children these things because we want to stop them having fun. We say these things to protect them. The same is true of our Father. Every single one of God's commands is designed to protect you, whether you understand it or not. And when we ignore Him, when we defy Him, or even worse, when we don't bother to actually learn His rules and study them, we hurt ourselves. We suffer without cause. It's fighting God after He's declared peace, and it only hurts ourselves. So, brothers and sisters, take time. Take time to study His will, study His word, learn what He wants from you, so that you can live His will in your lives. The more we listen to our Father, the more we stay at peace with Him, the more trouble we avoid. But, again, that's not going to guarantee us a trouble-free life. God actually promises us trouble. I hope that doesn't come as a surprise. That's a good thing. It's possible to get lukewarm when things are too easy. Too many creature comforts. You forget that you need God. The point of this life isn't to be comfortable here. It's to look forward to the next. We need God to send us trouble so that we don't forget we need Him. Paul tells us in our reading today that we should glory in our sufferings. When trouble finds us, do we let it shatter our peace? We lash out, maybe even try to blame God? The correct eternal perspective, godly perspective, helps us stay at peace no matter what comes for us here. We fight God when we live only to be satisfied now instead of living for Him forever. God keeps us from getting too comfortable so we don't forget. And so, when suffering comes, don't fight God over it. Take a deep breath and instead say, Thank you, Father. And so when a job is lost, say, Thank you, Father for reminding me that you provide everything I have. And when we're diagnosed with an illness, whether it's bothersome or terminal, say thank you, Father, for reminding me that my life and my strength and all my abilities are in your hands. And when things we have are lost, or people leave us, say thank you, Father, for reminding me you fulfill my every need. 
And when death comes for you or your loved ones, say, thank you, Father, for reminding me I do not belong here. That what is waiting is so much better, and I have no reason to cling to this life. I can let go in peace, because I know you've got me. And don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying you should just lie down and take whatever life throws at you. There's nothing wrong with using your abilities and your, your time to correct trouble, to try to alleviate pain. But that's no reason, there's no reason why trouble needs to steal our peace at all, no matter what we can or can't do about it. And if we can't fix the problem, whatever it is, you can still be at peace with God. There will be trouble. God allows those troubles to help you. Don't fight Him. Let the troubles bring you closer to Him. And one final word of encouragement. Don't sit here right now and fall into this trap of thinking now, you know, this is a really good idea. I'm going to screw up my strength, and I'm going to go out, and I'm going to be the best ever at being at peace now. It doesn't work that way. Even in this, it is the strength of God and not our own strength that lets us keep this attitude. He is the one who promises to give you the power that you need to live this way in your life, to stay at peace with Him. He promises this power through His Holy Spirit, through the study of His Word, through the gift of His sacraments. Read, study, stay in His power, stay connected to Him, and you'll keep the peace from Him. For the times that we fail, which will keep happening, there's always the forgiveness of Jesus to bring us back to peace. Brothers and sisters, you have peace with God through Jesus. He has given you a new life in Him. You are forgiven. You are perfect in His eyes. God has established the peace. Even through His Word, even now, He provides the power of the Holy Spirit to you so that you can keep the peace. Even this is just Him working. Stay in, stay in God's Word, study God's Word, study God's will for you, and by the power of His Spirit, don't fight Him. Look to God for everything good, now and forever, and know and live the peace that He has established. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in the responsive Nicene Creed. In a world that can only guess it was created somehow and by something, what do you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. In a world that often teaches Jesus was just a great human teacher, a wise prophet, or just another way to God, what do you believe? We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. In a world that still believes salvation is through the good and helpful things we do, what do you believe? For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. In a world that loosely holds on to every word that sounds spiritual or religious, what do you believe? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. May be seated for the offering. Please stand for prayer. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, Lord of glory, you delight in making yourself known to us and others. Bring us to recognize and rejoice in your majesty and your ministry. In love, you chose to exercise your greatest strength to serve us in our greatest need. You revealed the brightness of your glory through humble deeds of love. You called ordinary men to do extraordinary things as your disciples and apostles. You also call us confidently to follow you, diligently to learn from you, and lovingly to imitate you. Equip and empower us to serve you and our neighbor faithfully. Use us as your witnesses to bring many throughout the world to the light of your gospel. You revealed your glory through mighty signs and wonders. Assure us that you still rule all things in the universe and use them to serve our eternal good. In wise compassion, you often exercise your power to help and heal people with physical and emotional needs. Give us courage and compassion to relieve the distress of the hurting, to pray for all according to their needs, and to be content and cheerful when in your wisdom you ask us to endure hardship. And Lord, today we offer up a special prayer on behalf of those who have been and are being deployed to the conflict in Iran. We ask that you watch over those who travel. We ask that you watch over those in the conflict region. You are the God who rules over this world for our good. We ask you to bring safety to all who are in need of it. And in all things, whatever trouble comes, keep us at peace, knowing that our eternity is guaranteed. And now, Lord, we ask you to hear us as we bring you our private petitions. <coughs> Lord, preserve your truth among us, and by that truth preserve us until you appear in dazzling splendor to bring us to the glory of heaven. Let our anticipation of the heavenly kingdom ennoble our thinking and speaking, enrich our conduct, and increase our joy in all aspects of earthly life. And Lord, we ask you to hear us as we pray as you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. In the past, He spoke to us through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, 
who is the radiance of his glory. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. <laughs> Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me then he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always Holy. 
Holy Supper strengthen and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Be at peace. All of your sins are forgiven. Amen. Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you. May this holy supper strengthen and keep you in the true faith until life everlasting. Be at peace. All of your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
sisters go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 May be seated for our closing hymn, As with Gladness. Again, good morning to you all. It is always a joy. It is always a privilege to come here and worship with you. So I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm, I'm certain your pastor appreciates the break as well. So thank you for that. Um, I don't have anything that I have to say other than that, so I'm going to turn things over to Pastor Kalini for some announcements. Okay. Um, I got the next slide here for uh, some announcements because I didn't get it in the service folder. So um, thank you, Rob, for leading us in worship and for sharing the encouragement from God's Word today. Thank you to our accompanist for, for leading us in, in that aspect of our worship as well. Um, I put down the, the heading there, Growing in 2020, and, and you had seen that maybe on our Facebook page or somewhere else. So um, obviously I put a building with that. Um, we're growing in that way. But even more important to keep in mind is what, what's the whole purpose of that? Um, it, it's that we, we would continue to gather, hear God's words, and grow, grow in faith, and be sustained. Um, and be encouraged, and then also that others could join us and we can reach more people. So, um, Growing in 2020 also highlights um, our continued gathering around God's Word. Bible study is one of those aspects. We're going to start a new Bible study adults today um, with burden bearing, um, certainly fitting 
um, with the other news we, we prayed about, and also with the topic from Romans and, and Ron Tyler that I put a quarter or two down. Not that this life is ever going to be smooth sailing, nor should it be. And you start to go, nor should it be? And, and yeah, I got, and other quote, well, God promises us troubles, but, but he brings good. Um, so um, burden bearing certainly ties in with that, and we think of of the, uh, the conflict and, um, and those of our members already deployed. I know of a couple and I, I can't, I don't think I'm free to mention individually because I haven't heard individually who I, who I should mention to keep in prayers. Uh, but I will let you know as I get the okay to, to, to give individual names. Um, a couple of our, our members at least and others deployed already to the region where the conflict or potential conflict um, has, has, um, has risen. Okay, um, so that was one other announcement I was going to mention. It's just that aspect. I'm keeping your prayers. All of our, all of our troops here from obviously Fort Bragg, but other places too, um, deployed recently, very quickly, also, and um, and those that may be going, and, and all of that's involved with that. Okay, um, a couple other things. Then um, we see our schedule. So we've got our regular growing in God's Word time. So if I can get the help, the help of people to move those chairs in the back two sections, stack them. We'll put up the table in each of those. We'll get our, our kids in their Sunday school lessons. They're going to be doing the, the life of Joseph here, going back to some Old Testament for a little bit. Um, life of Joseph, seeing God's care there. Um, adults, we're doing burden bearing here, so hang, hang out if you're able to stay around today. Um, the other Bible information classes starting up again this week and different topics you see on the schedule there. And then the other big thing to know, um, we kind of had this news coming. We've got our annual congregational um, input and information meeting and then the voters meeting after. <coughs> so that is already next Sunday to do the meeting for the congregation to get everybody information, input. Um, so that's next Sunday. So let's do our schedule where we do a potluck, right? Worship, Bible study, get food. So bring some food to share. And then as soon as everybody has food, then we'll, then we'll have, um, have our, our information um, given out and give people's input on what's going on. A lot of that's going to be some updates on buildings. Were you ready to give an update already today? Well, yeah, I have the master trail plan now. We have it ready, so anybody that wants to sign up, it's here. So we have dates, so I uh, have each week and each day of Tuesday through Saturday laid out from February 18th to May 23rd. So sign up. Okay, and so I didn't pick up on, so you've got it set up so that they can sign up for which days they want, rather than setting up a rotation. Yep. That, that will be our rotation, sign up. All right, and just to give some people an idea, did you say you had about 11 or 12 different family yep. units that have said they're interested? Okay, so if we had a few others that still were interested then, and we had about 15, then it's only like once every three weeks that people would be thinking of needing to volunteer. Um, because then others can fill in, and, and that would kind of be a relief maybe on those who are, if you want to do more, you can, but just to keep that, that aspect in mind, you're not being asked to, and even if you could do one or two, you could still sign up. Okay. Thank you, Jill. The other thing that Jill was working on was the uh, membership and friend directory, and so we're going to get that out, I think, next Sunday, maybe. So we've got, okay, we've got a few, a few pictures, and, all right, so. We get a few more pictures. We'll get updates in there, and we'll and we'll get that out to you to you as well. Okay. And with the New York thing too, I noticed Kathy got offering envelopes for members out on the table there. You can take those and use those in the coming year if you use those for your offerings. And I think that's everything. Is that everything? Does that sound good? Stay around if you're able. Stay around for the added encouragement from God's Word, and then keep, keep in view the, the week ahead. God's blessings on the new week and the new year.